So up here I've written the rule for how to take the full derivative of a function of two variables with respect to one of the variables. And this looks a little bit complicated, right? It has, it has uh, several derivatives in it. Some of them are curly d's, some of them are, are full d's, but really it says something pretty simple. It says that if you want to take the full derivative, taking everything into account, we only have to add up two parts. First part is the part uh, if we just ignore the fact that y and x might be related to one another. We can just think of y as a constant with respect to x, taking the partial derivative. And then the other part is taking into account uh, the changes that happen through y. So to illustrate uh, how this can, kind of makes sense, let's take the full derivative and the partial derivative of this function g of x and y. Uh, and we're assuming again that x and y are not independent uh, that they're related to each other in some way. So let's take the partial derivative with a curly d here, partial derivative of g with respect to x. So we can take the derivative of each, of, of each piece here one at a time. So partial derivative of x squared with respect, oops, write a d there, with respect to x. And now we add the other term, partial derivative of x times sine y uh, with respect to x. Oops, x. All right, now let's simplify these terms. The first term's pretty easy. Uh, it's just the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. We don't really have to pay attention to the fact that it's a partial derivative because it's only a function of x. All right, and I wanted to write a pretty x. I'm trying to improve my handwriting. So next, we have the partial derivative of this function that involves y. That's okay because we're taking the partial derivative and we're just assuming that y is a constant uh, with respect to x and, and, and that sine y is a constant. So we can just take sine y out of the derivative. So we'll add sine y, sine of y, uh, times the derivative of x with respect to x partial derivative, but again, it doesn't really matter because this is only now a function of x, all right? And, and since uh, this is just one, uh, I'm going to cross it out. We didn't really need to write it, but I, I decided to be explicit about it. But here we, here we are with our partial derivative. Uh, things aren't, aren't too bad when you can just uh, ignore the fact that y uh, in general is a function of x. So now let's take the full derivative. I'll use this, this purple color. Uh, so the full derivative, the full derivative of g with respect to x, respect to x, same thing here. We can take the derivative of, of each term one at a time. So it's the full derivative of x, uh, x squared. And I want to do a pretty x. The pretty x doesn't mean anything different. I'm just trying to improve my handwriting. Uh, with respect to x, and then we can add the full derivative this time of x times sine of y uh, with, with respect to x. All right, so again, the first term here is pretty simple. We can just write uh, 2x, 2x here. And then uh, when we take the derivative of this part, things, things are a little bit more complicated this time. We can't just ignore that y depends on x and treat y and, and sine y as constants. Now we actually have two functions multiplied together. We have the product of two functions of x here. Uh, so we'll use the product rule. Uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll take out sine y uh, in the first term of the result of this product rule. We'll take sine y and then we'll multiply that by the derivative of x with respect to x, which is just one. And then we'll add for the other part of the product rule, we'll, we'll write the x times the derivative of sine y uh, with respect to x. Now notice that this part here, this part is the same as the partial derivative. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll underline that here. This part is the same as the partial derivative. This is just dg uh, dx 
uh, with curly d's. So we have the partial derivative of g with respect to x uh, plus some other term. And that's good. It's, it's starting to look something like what we might have gotten if we just applied this rule uh, from the beginning, right? It has the partial derivative of the function we're, we're taking the full derivative of right here, uh, df dx with curly d's. And then we're adding a part um, with some partial derivatives that in, involves y and x. So this does involve y and x. So it's, it's promising that it'll, it'll start to look like this. Uh, but, but to see that, let's, let's continue and, and keep going with this term. To keep going with this term, we have to use the chain rule. And what we get is, is we get x, x again. Um, when we use the chain rule, we get the partial derivative of sine y with respect to uh, y and times the full derivative of y with respect to x. And then if we go one step further, we take this partial derivative, uh, since we know, we know what this, this function is, um, the derivative of sine of y with respect to y is just cosine y, cosine y, and then we can't, unless we know the relationship between y and x, we can't evaluate dy dx, so we will just write dy dx. All right. Okay, and so I'll write out the, the final result again all together. 2x plus sine y uh, plus x cosine y times dy dx. All right, and this is what we get for the full derivative. dg uh, dx, full derivative. All right, so uh, this turns out to be the same thing we would have gotten if we just if we just plugged g in for f in this formula here when we're taking the, the derivative, full derivative with respect to x. Um, so we've already seen that this, this term right here, is the partial derivative. Uh, and now uh, we can see, or, or you should convince yourself, that this term right here corresponds to this term. Now finally, I want to want to really make sure it makes sense that we're doing the partial derivative here when we do the chain rule. We're not doing the full derivative. So say for the sake of argument that, that y equals x cubed, right? Then this, this part here, this part, this derivative of, of sine of y with respect to x could just be written as the derivative of sine of x, x cubed with respect to x. Now to do this derivative, you would want to use the chain rule, right? You'd want to say, well, first I wanna take the derivative of this sine of something, ignoring exactly what that something is, right? So when you take the derivative of the sine of something, you get the cosine of that something, right? Cosine of that something. But that's not the whole story. It's a three. Um, but that's not the whole story because this is not uh, just a plain old x. You have to multiply by the derivative of, of this thing. And really, even if it is an x, you, you have to multiply by the derivative, but it, it just turns out to be one. Uh, anyway, uh, so this, uh, so you multiply by two, Two, oops, three, multiply by three x squared. So that's how you would take the derivative of this sine of x cubed. Um, and this is just saying that, you know, if y were x cubed. But really what this is, this is cosine y, cosine of y, which is just the partial derivative of sine y with respect to y, right? It's the partial derivative. It's ignoring the fact that y depends on x. We're taking the derivative with respect to x. We just want to ignore this extra complexity for now, and then we can take care of it later by multiplying by this other term. This other term is just, so we're multiplying, this is just dy dx, or really the full derivative. We could write a partial derivative if x depended on something else that we cared about, but really we can just, we can just write the full derivative uh, since there's nothing else to ignore. This is just dy dx. I guess I'll write it down here so we have the whole thing together, dy dx, right? And this is what we got down here. We got cosine y times dy dx. I told you to convince yourself that this was the same thing, but I guess I, I just did that for you. Um, but anyway, um, hopefully that convinces you that this, this needs to be a partial derivative. Uh, when, when you're taking the chain rule, um, this, this part, you're actually, 
you're, you're ignoring some of the complexity in the first piece you write down. And that's really what the partial derivative is.